Welcome back everyone to Boring Build Friday, or Ordinary Car Friday, whatever you want to call it. Yes, we're still working on the same Yukon. If you don't know what Yukon I'm talking about, link's up above. So let's see if we can get all those parts that we cut off our parts car last week onto this thing. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take the lift gate off. We'll have to pull the glass off first. Make sure our wires aren't caught anywhere. Pull the little clips out that hold our glass on. Now we can take the lift struts off. Slide the glass over. And lift it up. Now we can take off our saran wrap, holding in the freshness. Pull off our nameplate. And we can cut our quarter. We're going to cut it where we're going to splice it in for the most part. That way we're only making one cut. It saves a little time. Now we'll grind out the welds instead of drilling them out. Method takes a little getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's kind of easy, especially on high strength steel. You basically just grind through the first layer of metal and they'll pop right off. Now we'll do the inside the same way. Grind each spot weld out. Part of the reason I'm doing this is to wear the die grinding disc down a little bit. I need to cut that top piece and it was a little too big to fit in there. So I wore it down. Instead of wasting time changing discs. Now our piece is loose. Make sure there's nothing behind it, and we're going to trim out the big piece in the center. One of those fancy new sawzall blades with teeth. in the pile. So now what we didn't shake loose with the sawzall, we'll just shake loose. Trim the rest of this piece off. That one doesn't go in the pile. We're gonna need it for a template later. Then it'll go in the pile. Now we're going to grind off the spot welds inside the wheel well, just like we did the pillar. No gloves. No hearing protection. Safety experts lose again. 
I was wearing safety glasses. It's a third of a win for you guys. Now instead of using a scraper or a breaker to break them apart, I'm just going to hit them with a hammer on the inside. We don't need this piece anyway. Much quicker. Just breaks all the welds loose. As long as you didn't miss any. I win. So now we're going to drill out our spot welds on the inside of the C-pillar. I didn't really feel like throwing too many sparks inside the car, so I did as much drilling as possible. And where I couldn't get the drill, back to the die grinder. Break as many loose as we can. Hammer our breaker in there. There's a link in the description for those breakers, in case you missed them last week. Got our drain tube for our sunroof. And the clip that holds it. So now we can take our spot welds out on the wheel well. And take that piece out. That easy. In the pile. Now we're onto the D pillar. Since we're going to leave that piece in there, we have to take everything off of it. So we'll drill out our spot welds. Slide our breaker down in there. Take off what's left of this piece. What Mr. Air Chisel hadn't already destroyed. Now I'll drill out these other welds. We can drill these all the way through because we need holes in them. We're not going to drill all the way through our other panel, so we need to be able to weld something up. Slide our breaker in there. Now we'll drill out inside the gate opening. And we'll cut the rear body panel. A little shorter than I would have liked the first time, so I decided to move it back. Cut it three times and it's still too short. Grind off our welds on the bottom. This is a little thicker, takes a little longer to grind through it. Break this piece loose. Now we're going to cut the outer piece on the top of the D-pillar. This is actually the quarter panel skin. We're going to cut all these pieces at different lengths. So we're sectioning them in different places. Grind out our welds. Break our, all our spot welds loose. And pry the piece off. In the pile. So now we'll cut our inside piece. Grind all our spot welds out of it. Now 
I'm going to cut this piece, the inner quarter. We're going to overlap this one, so we're going to cut a little long. Now we're going to take this other piece off that we had cut before, so we got a template. Now we can test fit our inner quarter. This will tell us if we got everything in the right place. And let us know where we're going to run into problems when we try to put it in for the last time. Clamped it up. Make sure it fit. Now we can take it back out of there. So now we're going to hammer and dolly this piece flat. Had a pretty good bend in it. It just has to be flat, pretty easy to straighten out. A lot harder to change, that's why I left it in there. So now we're gonna prep our piece to go in. So you just wanna grind anywhere that there's a weld on both sides, unless you're welding to a panel, and then just grind where the weld's going to. This just cleans all the debris out, gives you a nice weld. A lot of people skip this step. You end up with porous welds. It doesn't take that long, but it does take some time. And it is tedious and annoying. Now we're going to clean up the truck side. Now we're going to put our weld through primer on with my awesome masking system. As close as I get to masking off cars since I hate it. So we'll just put that anywhere that we're going to put the two pieces of metal together. Even though it's called primer, it doesn't really work like primer. So only put it where you're welding. So now we're waiting for that to dry. We're going to do some framework. Pull the exhaust hanger off. Throw our adjustment bar on there. A little bend up there. That's pretty close. Fine tune it. There's the extent of our framework on this build. That looks about right. Make sure we got all of our bare metal coated. And we can slide our piece in. Hopefully for the last time. There's a little struggle up in the front there on the dog leg. It goes between two panels and makes a kind of an S. We got it in, we can clamp it all up. Clamp this piece on. Kind of lined up the spot welds. And I had scribed that line. Here we're going to run a bolt in. 
instead of using another clamp, that'll hold it in nice and tight. This is the back side. That panel is on the panel we put in, so we're sandwiching it together. So now that we got that piece in, we can cut our D pillar. So here's our little template. Clamp it in there. We'll scribe our line. This cut matters. We're going to butt these together. So there's only going to be a small seam in the center that we have to weld up. Some of the other stuff we're going to overlap, so it doesn't really matter if it's close or not. So now I'll cut our piece out. You can cut all the way through on the inner part, but the outer edges where the other piece is underneath, you don't want to cut too deep. Because you only want to go through one panel. Now we're going to cut this piece out. We're going to use it for our backing. It's a lot easier to do when it's still attached to this piece instead of chasing it around the floor when it's smaller. So there's our backing. There's Slim. He's going to catch a workman's comp claim. That's all right. He never shows up for work anyway. And I decided cutting on the other side would be better. This side doesn't matter. We're going to overlap it. So as long as it's not too short, we're good. We're going to cut the inside piece. I'm going to cut this one a little bit lower so our welds are staggered. I'll knock this piece out. In the pile. So putting cars together isn't cutting a straight line and just welding it all up like a lot of people think. You stagger things. That adds strength to your repair. In the pile. So now we're going to trim our other side just to match. I cut that side a little higher because of that angle in there. It'll mess with the alignment. So now we're clean up where we're going to weld for our seam, just like we would for our spot welds, inside and outside, so the paint doesn't get into our welds. Now for something they don't teach you in school. So we're going to overlap our other pillar here and it has one of these brackets. So you can thread a bolt in here, it's actually for the airbag. If this had a third row, there'd be an additional airbag that goes back here. So it's not actually used on this truck, but we're gonna take this piece off. Our other piece will have another one, and we'll be able to run a bolt through this into our other one to hold it together before we weld it. So we'll get it in place, bolt it in, and then weld it up. It's easier than having a clamp, and when we're done, we can just leave the bolt in there and have a little extra strength. Now we're going to drill the little piece out. Mr. Spotty's inspecting. Knock it out of there. Now we got our quarter skin. Those pieces that we saved, we can use to scribe where we're going to cut. 
These are going to be butt welds. We need them to be exact. Well, a portion of them. Here where I went outside the line is going to be an overlap. There's no panel behind it, so it doesn't really matter how thick it is. And it saves me from making a backing for the whole thing. I decide I want to go a little further. Our butt weld will butt up against each other, and then that piece will slide underneath. So I'll have a backing. Now we're going to put our backing in for our D-pillar. Clamp it up. Tack it in there. Make sure nothing is on fire. Now before we put our D-pillar in, we got to clean all this paint that was broken from the accident. Scuff it all up. Blow it out of there. Scuff it all up again. Now we're going to put some primer on it. This is etching primer. Not the same as weld through primer. This is actual primer. But we're not going to be able to get to this piece once we're done. So we're going to prime it all now so that it, we don't have to worry about any rust later. And now we can put our weld through primer on. Again with our masking cardboard so we don't get it all over the place. It does clean up pretty easy. We only want to put it in between the bare metal mating surfaces. That's why I didn't fill all the holes in. Missed two. All right, now our piece is ready to go in there. Slide it up into place for our panels that overlap. Slide it up to our butt joints. The panel on the bottom didn't want to play nice. It's supposed to go inside, so we just had to pry it up to get it in there. I'll clamp it up. Run our bolt in there to hold it in place. Now we need to push the roof up. The weight of the roof pushes down. So our opening would have been a little too short. So we're going to move it up a little bit. And we're going to measure it, make sure it's right. I took these measurements off the other truck before I cut it apart. I took lots. I got a couple cross measurements and then some side to side. Cross measurements are my favorite because it gives you up and down and left to right at the same time. So now our piece is where we want it. We're going to tack it in there. Throw our quarter up there to make sure everything's lining up. We don't want to weld it in place and then try to put our quarter on and it doesn't fit. So that's it. We ran out of time for this week. So tune in next week. We'll get that quarter panel on and completely weld it up. Then we'll send it off to the body and paint guys for them to do their magic. So like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see the rest of this build. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.